All right, hello there. Video number three of the Carpenter series. Uh, they call me the Carpenter because that's what I am. My name is Rolando Garcia, as you know, and uh, I used to be a musician, but I've always been a cabinet maker ever since the Lord came into my life. Uh, 1982, actually in 83 is when I started doing carpentry work. And here I am, 40 years later, and this is my shop. Anyway, uh, if you saw the last uh, video that we did, I began to talk about the new birth and, and my, the desire that I want or whatever it is we're trying to do is trying to reach the people that, if, if you've known me for a long time, and there's a lot of people that have, uh, and, and the first thing that people that, that are not uh, biblically orientated, I guess, or I'll just say what I say, uh, people always say, you know, this guy did everything and now he's turned to religion and religion and religion and religion. You know, and the people that are Christians understand that that's not the way it is. The Lord can reach anybody at any time if he desires, okay? Uh, but this isn't religion. I stand against all religions in reality. I don't respect any single religion because as soon as it gets out of what the Word says here, I stand against it. And most religions stand against what the Word says. Okay? So anyway, what I want to talk to you all about today is what we call the new birth. And we have, in the Bible, we have the Old Testament and the New Testament. There are 66 books altogether in the Bible. And the New Testament has 27 of those books. Uh, so the, uh, the Old Testament is 39, I believe, somewhere in that area. But in the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, the four Gospels that start. And then it goes on to uh, Romans, Corinthians, and Acts, and what have you. But in the book of John, New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you open to that book, if you've never read the Bible before, it's in the New Testament. Make sure you open up and look for the New Testament. It'll tell you the New Testament. You go to the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Chapter 3 is where Jesus begins to explain. Of all of those out there that are, that are, that are listening right now, and they, they've, they've heard the term born again, but they really don't believe it. Because most of the time where you go to church, they don't preach it. Uh, but anyway, I want to show you what, where that comes from. And in Jerusalem, in those days... Uh, they had the, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees. Those were the three religious organizations that ran all of Judaism. Uh, the religion, if you want to call it, of Judaism. And uh, out of the Pharisees, there was uh, one called Nicodemus. He was a high-paid high, high teacher. This guy was like the third in, in command, or maybe even the first. But I know that according to what, what, uh, what it talks about him here in, in these areas, it says, he was of the rabbinical tradition, makes him one of the three richest men in Jerusalem. Okay, this guy was a ruler. He, 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 he taught people the scriptures. He wasn't a nobody. This guy was a somebody in those days. He comes to Jesus by night because he didn't want people to see him. He didn't want his religious partners to see him coming to Jesus, but he could see that there was something about Jesus that had to be come from God. And he says, okay, I'm going to start reading in chapter 3, verse 1. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, or Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus says you have to be born again. I'm not saying it. Neither was Nicodemus. Jesus said, Unless, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And the word spirit here is in capital letters, which means spirit of God. Okay, so 
Jesus is making it clear. You have to be born of the flesh. You have to be born of a womb. Okay, that's how babies are made. And that's how all of us are made. You're born of a woman. Okay, once you're born of a woman, you're flesh. And we grow up flesh. Okay, it's not until you actually have the Spirit with a capital S, which is the Spirit of God, living within you that makes you a spiritual person or become a son or daughter of God our Father. Okay, now, once again, I'm, I'm not the one saying this. Jesus is saying this here. Uh, and he's telling this to the head honcho religious leader of the day that's supposed to know it all. But he didn't know this. How many of you all out there don't know this either? I, I don't know. You know, I, I know that I was, I was 29 years old when the Lord came to my heart. And that's when I was born again, if you want to call it like that. And, and the two words for born again is actually begotten from above. So if you haven't been begotten from above, if God hasn't come into you and lives within you, you're not born again. And in reality, you're not a Christian. Christians are people that have been born again. Okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, here we go. My God, here. Okay. After Nicodemus tells him, answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Nicodemus is asking Jesus, But how can these things be? And then Jesus, in verse 10, says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art, then, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? In other words, aren't you a big shot guy and you don't know this thing? I mean, this, I don't understand. What, what keeps you from knowing the truth? Jesus speaking says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that which we do know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm telling you the truth. Most of the time you don't receive it. And that's basically where a lot of people are. They hear the truth and they don't receive it. They don't accept it because their religion might say something else. And they stick to their religion because that's where their comfort zone is. Okay, it's not until Jesus comes into your heart that you are born again of the Spirit of God. And now you are a Christian. If wherever you go to church doesn't preach that, doesn't teach you that, you know, your best bet is just to get out of there. Run, run as far as you can from there. Because if they're not doing that, they're not helping you or anybody out. They are sending you bottom line to hell. Okay, so if you go to a church and they've never taught you that Jesus says you have to be born again to see the kingdom of God and to enter the kingdom of God. If they're not teaching you that, get out of there, dude. Get out. I mean, you don't have any business. It's like get out of there and start seeking the Lord and get into the word. Read what the word says. Okay, now if you're listening to this and you've had something in your heart and your mind that uh, that maybe God is working in your heart or in your life. Uh, if you have seen that whatever you're hearing at the church level, wherever it is that you're going to, and they're not teaching you these, these things, uh, I, I need to read one more scripture over here. It, and it's still in the book of John. Okay, we're still in the book of John. We're going to go to chapter 6. Uh, and we're going to go to verse 44. This is Jesus talking, and he was talking to the religious leaders of the day then because they all came against him. See, Jesus didn't have any problems with people like, like me and people at my level. We're, we're laborers. We're common folk. We live from check to check. Okay, we're, we don't, we're not nobody special or anything like that. We're just common working people. He didn't have problems with the common working people. He had problems with the religious leaders of the day. Be why? Because... He came with the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? And that's who he is. So he says in, in verse 44 of, the, of John chapter 6, talking to the, to the religious guys, he says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So if you're in a situation where... where you feel that God is beginning to draw you, praise God. Because no one can come to Jesus unless God draws you, God the Father draws you to Him. Okay, and once He does, all I did was, I said, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Once you do that, 
the Spirit of God comes into you, and, and you'll know. You'll know, okay? If, if you're sincere, you'll know. If you're not sincere, then God doesn't mess with you. It's that simple, okay? If you cry wolf all the time, God doesn't go ahead and cry wolf. But if you're serious, get serious with the Lord. You need to be born of the Spirit of God, born again. And if you want to do it right now, wherever you are, all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. And if you mean it, it'll happen. Okay? And then from there we can start this Bible study. But you'll know that the base is that you have to be born of the Spirit of God. To be able to understand the Word. To seek God and to know God. Now, I'm done for the day. I hope that whatever it is that you heard was something that, that maybe you've been wanting to hear or seeking God about. So until we see you again uh, here you know, the next video, uh, remember, spend time with God, okay? If, if you today ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life, to your heart, spend time with God. And I don't mean just people go and, and every time they spend time with God, so they're asking Him for something. Lord, I need a new car. Lord, I need a house. Lord, I need this. I need that. That's not spending time with God, okay? God knows what you need, but spend time with Him. Tell Him that you love Him. Tell him that he's all, all inclusive in your heart, that you love him with all of your heart. Spend time with him, and you'll see how your life begins to change, okay? I can't hear what you, oh, countryrolling.com, I'm sorry. I'm, my producer over there, Paul, keeps telling me what to do, because I don't really know what. Anyway, check us out, countryrolling.com. Uh, but spend time with God. That is important because the times that are coming in this world, if you have never spent time with God, you're going to miss the boat. It's real simple. You're going to miss the boat. So spend time with God. Okay? The Lord bless you. I love you all. Thank you all for listening. And we'll catch you all in the next segment. Lord bless. Bye-bye.